accept the challenge of the 1957 world champion Milwaukee Braves, Warren Spahn, Henry Aaron, and Eddie Matthews. And now, here's the host of Sports Challenge, Dick Ember. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. And welcome fans from coast to coast and around the world to Sports Challenge. Oh, what a lineup. We have three Hall of Famers from the Celtics, Cousy and Auerbach and Sharman. And watch out, Braves. It uh, looks like the redhead already has the cigar <laughs> lighted. And for the Braves, look, just look at that picture. Now, you got Warren Spahn, no man in Major League Baseball history ever won more games as a left-hander than Spahn, over, well over 300. And between Henry Aaron and Eddie Matthews, you've got almost 1,300 Major League home runs. Good luck to both teams. The Celtics play the Braves on Sports Challenge. And we'll begin our first category, men and one of the many record breakers established by the immortal Henry Aaron. Right after this Sports Challenge timeout. We have the champions of the National Basketball Association, the Boston Celtics, many, many times champs against the 1957 world champs of baseball, the Milwaukee Braves. Here we go, men. Your toss-up question. First category is record breakers. Another milestone in Henry Aaron's magnificent career. Here's Chuck Benedict. May 17, 1970, Atlanta at Cincinnati. Henry Aaron at bat against the Reds' Wayne Simpson. Aaron looking for the big one. Infield pulled around to the left. Ground ball past the mound. Woodward over. He'll have to hustle. Aaron beats it out, and that's the big one. Base hit number 3,000 for Henry Aaron, and Stan Musial congratulates him. That's a pretty good picture. Aaron Musial, they finished one and two all time in National League hits, career hits. Only 13 men, only 13 in the history of baseball, are in that exclusive 3,000-hit club. Obviously, many greats didn't make it to 3,000. Your question for 20 points, toss-up. One of the following four did not collect 3,000 Major League hits. Name him. I'm going to give them to you alphabetically. Al Kaline, Willie Mays, Babe Ruth, Honus Wagner. Bill Sharman. I say Babe Ruth. Babe Ruth did not have 3,000 hits. That's right. 20 points for the Celtics. Celtics get the free throws. Final moments of the record-breaking coaching career of UCLA's John Wooden. San Diego Arena, 1975 NCAA championship. Here's Kurt Gowdy. Say something to the young people of America. John Wooden did become a national winner until he was 53 years old. He didn't win in his first 16 years at UCLA, a national title. He won in his late 50s and 60s. UCLA has won the national title. They're ahead, 92 85. Up on the rebound, Marcus Johnson. Getting across, three, two, one. Ball over, UCLA. Story. What an incredible finish. Wooden, of course, had announced his retirement before that final game and won his 10th and final NCAA championship in that contest in San Diego. His Bruins won the most national collegiate titles ever, 10. For 10 points, Celtics, what team is second with five NCAA championships? Kentucky. Kentucky, Kentucky. says Red Auerbach, is correct. The Wildcats who won their fifth in 1978. 30 points for the Celtics, and here's your final free throw. August 1961, and a 40-year-old Southpaw makes his way into baseball's history books. Warren Spahn has given these Milwaukee fans so many great thrills and in great numbers. A sellout crowd at County Stadium tonight to cheer Spahn on as he goes for his 300th Major League victory against the Chicago Cubs. The Cubs with a run in the sixth inning have tied it at one. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning. Gino Simoli up for the Braves. He swings at a Jack Curtis fastball, and it's gone into the left field bleachers. Milwaukee leads two to one. Spawn now has only three outs to go to get his 300th win. Two away. Up is Jim McEnany. Fly ball to right field. Henry Aaron is there. He's got it. And Warren Spawn has become the first National League pitcher since Grover Cleveland Alexander in 1924 to win 300 Major League games. I love that conservative Warren Spahn as he went off the field blowing kisses to the crowd and doffing his cap. Spahn's 300th win, a milestone on his way to the Hall of Fame. Celtics, only three 
National League Southpaws have ever been inducted into Baseball's Hall of Fame. Carl Hubble is one, Spani is one, and a Dodger pitcher of the 60s is the third. Ten points, name that third Southpaw. Koufax. Sandy Koufax is correct, and the Celtics, after the first round, have 40, and the Milwaukee Braves looking for their first point. Here's your new category, men. Category two, the unexpected, and an amazing moment in NFL history. The Vikings and the Bills, December 1975. Leading Buffalo here in the second half. Snow here in Buffalo. And Fran Tarkenton already has one touchdown pass today. He's going for the record. He's rolling right. Looks for Foreman. Flips in the flat. Complete the Foreman at the four. Hit at the four. Breaks the tackle. Slips. Braces himself. He's in the end zone. That'll do it. The 291st touchdown pass by Fran Tarkenton. That is an all-time record. He breaks Johnny Unitas' mark. Foreman has tied the single-season mark. That was his 22nd touchdown. A historic play. Fran Tarkenton to Foreman. This will be interesting. We have basketball and baseball players. We'll see what they know about football. It was unexpected that the little scrambler from Georgia would throw more touchdown passes than any quarterback in NFL history. But for your 20-point toss-up, what Colt quarterback holds the record for completing 17 consecutive forward passes? 17 in a row, a Baltimore Colt quarterback. Can you name him? We'll give you a clue. His father... Dub starred in the 50s with the Cleveland Browns. And this cold quarterback set the record in 1974. Yes, Morrow? Earl Morrow? Earl Morrow is incorrect. So we'll repeat the clues for the Milwaukee Braves. It's worth 20 points in the toss-up. He completed 17 straight passes. His father played for the Browns. His name was Dub. He did this record, set this record in 1974. Time's up. Burt Jones, Burt Jones of the Colts. All right, we play the two free throws as if they're toss-ups. You're both alive on both these free throws. When Ty Cobb retired, it was unexpected that his base-stealing record would be broken. It's August 1977. Cards, Padres. Here's Al Wisk. In the first inning, he tied Cobb's record. Now in the seventh, he's trying to break it. This could be it. There goes Brock. The pitch by Jones. The throw by Roberts. He hits away, and he's done it. He has done it. Lou Brock has stolen base 893. That is a new Major League career record. He has broken the record set by Ty Cobb, a record they said would never be broken. Yeah, he's the same. But the moment is here. And I, all I can say, looking back on it, uh, Randy, I did it my way. I did it my way. Lou Brock. Now, that was a record people said would never be broken. Another Cardinal outfielder, now you're both alive, in 46 was credited with stealing the World Series against the Red Sox. He went from first to home. Eddie Matthews. Uh, slaughter. Went first to home on a single. Ten points named that Cardinal outfielder, Enos Country Slaughter. That's ten points for the Braves. It's 40 to 10. Your final free throw and you're both alive again. An unexpected moment. Game three, 70 NBA playoffs. The Knicks lead the Lakers, seconds to play. Here's Chick Hearn with an incredible moment. Good! Three seconds. Inbound pass to West. West from the backcourt, an 80-foot jumper. Good! <laughs> that reminds me of the shot we showed Sean in making uh, last week on Sports Challenge. Only Bill was trying to throw a pass to Cousy, and, <laughs> and West really was trying to make that one. He was a pretty good percentage shooter, was he not, Red? Well, he was one of the best. All right, so here we got two great guards here and West in the same era. All right, this is your second free throw, both the Braves and the Celtics alive. Despite his many great years, West was never an NBA most valuable player. Another all-time great did not win an MVP award in his career. We want you to name which of the following did not win the most viable player in the National Basketball Association. Was it Will Chamberlain, Willis Reed, Elgin Baylor, or Bill Russell? Willis Reed. Willis Reed is an incorrect answer. Willis Reed did it one at one time with the Knicks. So Braves, it's worth 10 points to you. Was it then Will Chamberlain, Elgin Baylor, or Bill Russell who did not win the MVP? Your guess, please. Elgin Baylor. Elgin Baylor is correct for 10 <laughs> points. So after two rounds, the score, the Boston Celtics 40 and the Milwaukee Braves 20. And we'll be back with our third category 
famous finishes and a look at an NCAA basketball finish that is almost unbelievable right after this sports challenge timeout.